Hey everyone, Marcus Philly here today and we are talking pistols and pull-ups. These are going to be some skills and some tips that will hopefully get you busting through plateaus and finally mastering these skills. Check them out. When I've coached my athletes, I see how frustrating it is when they're constantly failing these movements, they're stuck in these skills, and everyone around them in the gym seems to have mastered them. So today I'm gonna to break down through a series of regressions and progressions, how you can build strength and build skill and feel more confidence week after week. Additionally, we're not gonna just look at how to train these skills individually, but also how to take them into mixed modal conditioning workouts and adapt them correctly so that you get the proper dose response for the conditioning piece that you're doing in your training. With functional bodybuilding, there's a lot of ways to regress and progress movements. And if you have to take a step back, it doesn't mean you're a bad athlete. It means that you're honing in on the skill level that's going to drive the most success for you. This means you're just working smarter to build strength at your end ranges of motion so you can command and own these movements. This way that no matter what you're working on, you can be the best mover in the room and you can reduce your risk of injury. So we're about to get started with the pistol squat. And before we do that, one final note to think about. As you watch these progressions for both the pull-up and the pistol squat, I want you to look at specifically how these movements can be progressed if that's a goal of yours. But if you have other movements in general within the gym that you're trying to progress, other skills that you're trying to develop, I want you to look deeper into the concepts that we're laying out here. How do we take something from simple up to complex? These are gonna be important things for you to think about as you try and take these progressions and these concepts and apply them across your training experience. Remember, progression, regression, this is the key to you developing skills in all areas of fitness, not just your pistol and your pull-up. Okay, we're gonna get going with the pistol and we're gonna show you a progression from simple to complex. Before we dive into that, I'm gonna take a moment here with Anthony, Coach Anthony, functional bodybuilding master coach that works alongside with me. And I'm gonna show you a particular exercise that is gonna help improve your flexibility for the pistol squat, which is essential to gain access to the range of motion that you need to execute the standard, which we'll show you here shortly. We're going through a variety of different ways to progress your pistol, but the pistol squat requires a tremendous amount of ankle, knee, and hip flexibility. Hip flexor specifically. So one exercise that can be done to improve all of these different areas is the ATG split squat. And I'm going to show you a couple ways to get into this. And it's uh, starting with Anthony doing a foot elevated, hand supported, ATG split squat. What I'm gonna ask him to do is move his body forward into a lunge or a split squat position, and he's gonna drive the knee as far forward as possible. If this heel comes up, that's okay. He's trying to get a big stretch in his Achilles, soleus, ankle, knee, and then also on this other leg, the right, right leg over here, he's gonna squeeze his butt. He's gonna keep that leg as straight as possible so he gets a hip flexor stretch on that side. Now this is totally safe for him to do, He's pain free, he's holding on, his foot is elevated, and he can help himself back up. So doing repetitions of 10 to 15 reps of that, two to three times, is gonna help him over the weeks of doing this progressively to get more knee, ankle flexibility, as well as hip flexor flexibility, which is so essential for the pistol squat. Now, if he's progressed from that, take his foot off the box, actually before we get to the foot off the box, he can do this unassisted, so we would progress to a place where he could do it foot flat, now his heel's not coming up because he's gotten more flexibility. And back up, all while keeping that back leg straight. So we progress to try and get that heel to stay down, knee way over the toe, getting his hamstring to cover his calf all the way down at the bottom. Great. And then go ahead and lift your foot. Beyond that would be doing this on the floor we would work towards getting him to be able to do the same standard range of motion where the knee comes out over the toe, heel is down, we get more full coverage here, which we can see that Anthony's still working on progressing this position because he's got tight ankles. And Anthony, are pistols difficult for you? Yeah. Yeah, difficult for him, okay? So Anthony's working this concurrently with his pistol progressions. Give those a try. 
This ATG split squat, it's tremendous for building these three different positions, uh, hip flexor, ankle, and knee strength and flexibility. Okay, I'm gonna start by showing you the standard that we are trying to achieve. So starting tall on one leg, you're gonna lower your body all the way down until your hips drop below your knee and your hamstring fully covers your calf muscle. Your foot is gonna remain flat on the ground and the non-working leg should be straight out in front of you supported by your own strength, not by your arm reaching down to grab it. Lastly, we wanna keep the torso as upright as possible. And what I'm showing you is two different types of footwear that I'm doing these repetitions with. One is gonna be the Olympic lifting shoe, which adds about a one to two inch heel lift, which is gonna make the movement easier for me. It's gonna help me overcome ankle flexibility, imbalances or restrictions that I may have, that you may have. You can see that my torso is more upright when I'm using the Olympic lifting shoe versus the flat shoe. In either case, I'm able to achieve the standard, which is five reps per leg consecutively on both sides. So now how do we progress there? Well, here are five movements that you can add to your training that will get progressively more difficult as you move through them. First is the lateral box step down. This is performed at first on a shorter box with one leg hanging off to the side. And your goal is to drop the non-working leg down to the ground and lightly tap the heel before standing back up. You would work this for sets of five to 10 repetitions on each leg. And once you get confident doing sets of 10 at a particular box height, you would then raise that box height a little bit higher. Once you're doing lateral box step downs at a box height, where when you tap your heel to the floor, your hip crease is dropping below your knee, AKA a full range of motion pistol squat, then you can progress to the next stage. Okay, the next step is the box pistol negative. In this exercise, you're just gonna be performing the eccentric or the lowering phase of the box pistol. So you'll have one leg hanging off the side. You're gonna lower yourself under control until you reach a full depth single leg squat with the non-working leg elevated off the ground. The box is helping you to achieve this position because you don't have to lift the non-working leg as high. There aren't flexibility demands and restrictions here as they would be in a pistol squat. And so you're gonna perform these lowering negatives all the way down, reach a full range of motion, and then support yourself back up to the top. Repeat it for anywhere from five, again, to 10 repetitions per side. So now you're confident with your box pistol negatives. We're gonna lower that box height to about knee height when you're standing next to it. And the next step in the progression is to grab a weight plate. You're gonna perform weighted box pistol negatives. By overloading this eccentric or lowering phase of the exercise, you can build a tremendous amount of stability, strength, and balance in that working leg. So same as before, you gotta hit full range of motion with the non-working leg off the ground, not touching. You repeat that, support yourself back up to the top, and perform anywhere from five to 10 repetitions per leg. Okay, now's the first chance at performing the full range of motion pistol. We're gonna stay on the box. You're gonna ditch the weight and now you're gonna lower yourself under control all the way to the bottom and then use your own concentric strength to stand back up on a single leg. You're not supporting yourself anymore, so this is gonna require a lot more strength to overcome gravity and stand back up. This is where the repetitions start to feel exactly like a pistol just the box height is allowing you to overcome mobility restrictions and obstacles that make it difficult for people to get into optimal position. Okay, it's time to get rid of the box and it's time to get back onto the floor and start working your pistol. Now, as I've said before, the ankle restriction and ankle mobility is one of the biggest limiting factors for people when doing pistols. So this is a time to try a heel elevated pistol. You can put your heel onto a weight plate. This is a good time to grab your weightlifting shoes. Again, we want to get you in the best possible position to actually perform the full range of motion movement with all the other standards being met. And then you can start to build more ankle flexibility using the ATG split squat that we showed you with Anthony over time. And then eventually you're going to be able to progress to the standard, which is foot flat on the floor for five to 10 reps per leg. We showed you a progression to get to the standard. What if you wanna progress beyond that? There are always ways to make movements more challenging, even if they are body weight movements like the pistol that are highly demanding to begin with. You can always add weight. There is the weight plate pistol squat, and then 
taking that load and putting it in a kettlebell rack position would make it even more difficult. So two progressions that you could work on in your strength training to develop your pistol even further would be the weight plate pistol squat or the kettlebell rack pistol squat. Take a few minutes to go back and rewatch any of those different regressions to make sure you're hitting points of performance. If they're done correctly, that's how you improve skills. Regress, do it perfectly, you'll get better. We're gonna take a break from the pistol. We're gonna now jump into the pull-up. Here to join me again is Anthony, Functional Bodybuilding Master Coach, to help show us three key exercises that are gonna help us build our shoulder scapular strength to support our pull-up skill. Before we dive into the pull-up progressions, it's important to understand that building strong scapula muscles, scapular muscles that surround the shoulder blades, is what's going to give you access to the strongest pulling muscles in your upper body. So for that, I've got three banded exercises that I'm going to have Anthony demonstrate. These three banded exercises should be done every day you do your pull-up work, and they can be done for about 10 to 12 reps for three sets each. He's going to start with a banded face pull. All of these are going to get done with the band just on the top of the pull-up bar. He's gonna pull the back of his hands up to his temples. He's gonna try and keep his elbows high and really rotate his wrists in towards his head. So perfect. And he'll go ahead and do 12 reps of that. If a coaching cue is, is needed, putting your fingertips between his shoulder blades in the back to cue him to pinch those muscles together is ideal. Okay, the second exercise, he's gonna go straight into a straight arm banded lat pull down. Okay, he can even hinge at the hips a little bit. What that's gonna do is gonna open up the angle at his shoulders. He's gonna pinch his shoulder blades back and really fight to keep his elbows straight, really learning how to engage lat muscles while keeping his shoulder blades tight. And then the last one, he can step in a little bit. He's gonna keep his palms down and he's just gonna do banded pull-aparts in the same position. Again, the same cueing of fingertips between the shoulder blades to try and remind him, pinching them together. You can think about having a pencil in between his shoulder blades, he's trying to pinch hold it at the back. And this is an exercise that can be done with the palms down, call that pronated, and he could even flip his hands up and do it supinated as well. So you can do it alternating or one or the other depending on the day. Great. So try those three scapular exercises in addition to your pull-up work. I think over the course of my coaching career, the strict pull-up is the skill and the strength effort that eludes most athletes and most clients. They desperately want it, they don't know how to get it. How are you gonna achieve the standard, which you're seeing right now, of 10 strict pull-ups with your palms facing away from you or towards you? You gotta start from a dead hang and get your chin over the bar. What does that look like? Well, let's get started with the progression. To get this started, we're actually gonna start on the rings. I love the rings as a tool to train upper body pulling because depending on how you place your feet, where you position the angle of the rings and your body, you can try and pull against many different angles. You see me pulling in two different variations here on the rings. One that's a bit more horizontal and is really gonna work my upper back muscles, which are important for the pull-up that's coming ahead. The second, I'm adjusting my body position and I'm working on a more vertical pulling position for the ring row or the ring pull-up. This is gonna simulate where we're headed to next when we start to do assisted pull-up variations on the bar. But like I said, I love the rings because they're versatile, they can move easily, and you can really develop a lot of training volume in your upper body pulling because you're supporting so much of your weight with your feet. And depending on the angle at which you put the rings, it can make it much easier or much harder. This is a great place to develop a lot of muscle endurance, a lot of awareness in your upper back, and get your reps in early before you move on to the bar. Now that we've moved on to the bar, I suggest starting with feet assisted pull-ups. If you had one of those machines that could actually support your feet underneath you while you were doing a pull-up, that would be a great tool to use. However, most people in their gyms or their homes don't have that. So find a sturdy chair or a sturdy box, place it underneath the pull-up bar so that when you're hanging on the bar, you have your feet comfortably on that box to support you. Now, this is gonna be a tool for you to use that's gonna be very subjective. How much weight should I put into my feet? How much weight should I pull with my upper body? Ideally, you wanna make these repetitions as hard as you can, but it's very difficult to measure that with your feet on the box. Use this as a tool to help you really learn what the right way to pull up over the bar is, how it feels, and get comfortable 
hanging from the bar at the bottom and pulling to the full range of motion. Okay, the box or feet assisted pull up has helped us develop some comfort hanging from the bar, learning how to get our chin over the bar, really understanding the full range of motion. But now it's time to move on to something that's more measurable. So for that, we're gonna do a band assisted pull ups. Hang a band from your pull up bar, slip one foot in there, cross the other one over in front. And now we're gonna go through that full range of motion. And we know with the thickness of that band, we have a measurable standard to keep us accountable to how much we're able to pull of our own body weight over the bar. Aim for sets of 10 to 12 on every set. As you get stronger, the band gets thinner. As you're progressing through all of these full range of motion variations from the rings to the box to the band, there's something that you might wanna be doing concurrently. That is called eccentrics or negatives, pull-up negatives. At some point, you're gonna to start to get strong enough and feel confident to hold yourself, your own body weight, over the top of the bar without any assistance. Then, because gravity works with you on the way down, we are stronger on the lowering phase of this exercise. So before you can ever do a pull-up, long before you can ever do a full strict pull-up, you're gonna be able to lower your own body weight under control through the negative or the downward range of motion of the pull-up. The eccentric pull-up is one of the most powerful ways to develop strength for the pull-up. And no amount of bands and no amount of feet assisted pull-ups will get you to a strict pull-up as fast as if you start using these eccentrics. So it's important to do them correctly. When you perform negatives in the strict pull-up, I want you to get a box that's plenty high. I want you to be able to grab onto the pull-up bar while standing on the box or the stool or the chair and simply step off the side of it with your chin already over the bar. From this starting position where you're working really hard to keep yourself over the bar, you're going to initiate a lowering of your body weight, slowly under control. Most importantly, you have to control that all the way to the full range of motion at the bottom. So as you can see in these repetitions, when I get to the bottom of a negative, I have my feet off the ground. That means I've controlled the range of motion from chin over bar all the way down to a dead hang. Every rep, step back up on the box, start from the top, and then just work on the lowering phase. As you get stronger, you can hold those downward tempos for longer, five seconds down, 10 seconds down. And that is how you're going to progress your strength dramatically. We can even overload these eccentrics, and that would be a weighted negative. So once you've gotten enough control and being able to lower your body from the top to the bottom of the range of motion in about 10 seconds, you could be ready to add weight to your body. Now that could be in the form of a dumbbell between your legs, a weight vest perhaps, or in the example that you're seeing here, a chain with a weight hanging from your waist. The same rules apply, exactly the same technique, exactly the same standard, only you're gonna build up weight instead of adding more time under tension in the lowering phase. So pick a time of five seconds from top to bottom, add weight to your own body weight, and build this up slowly over time. The magic of this system is that if you're doing some full range of motion repetitions, whether it be with a band or on the rings, and you're working these eccentrics or negatives time and time and time again, when you can perform weighted negatives at about let's say 20% of your body weight to 30% of your body weight under some level of control, you will magically have your first strict pull-up. Now, in order to progress that strict pull-up beyond just one repetition, you're gonna have to do this more frequently, keep up your eccentric work, keep up your assisted work, and then work your strict pull-ups on a regular basis, working on that body weight strict pull-up so you can go from one to two to five and ultimately to 10 repetitions. And of course, 10 repetitions in the strict pull-up is not the end goal. There's always ways to progress further. You can make the change to how you perform the exercise in body position, and that would look like an L pull-up, or you could start doing weighted pull-ups, weighted strict pull-ups with various grips. You could get extremely strong in that. I've seen people lift hundreds of pounds attached to their body while doing a strict pull-up. So there's the sky is the limit with strict pull-ups, but Master the standard by following the progression that was outlined in this video. 
We've covered a ton of information already today, so please take some time to go back and rewatch and rewatch these movement progressions to make sure that you understand how you're supposed to do them and when you're ready to progress to the next step. If you can do that, you will be able to acquire these skills if you put in enough time. But then the question becomes, all right, I go to the gym, the workout says I've got to do five rounds for time of 10 pull-ups and 15 pistols. Marcus, what do I do? Where do I start in the progression? What movement do I substitute in? So I wanna spend just a little bit of time here at the end of this video to review how we can incorporate these regressions into a mixed modal conditioning piece so that you can get the right dose and you can keep up with the people around you and you can feel like you got the right workout for yourself without putting yourself at risk of injury. So one of the most important differences about picking the right skill level to bring into a conditioning workout is that what we showed you before were progressions and skill progressions that are done when you're not fatigued. You go into these sets relatively fresh, you're working on your strength progression, and you're trying to get the best quality out of every single rep so it makes sense to not do this while you're under aerobic stress as well. But these movements do show up in workouts, especially in functional bodybuilding and persist programs, where you're actually under a little bit of metabolic fatigue. So I'm gonna show you an example of a classic conditioning workout that we do every minute on the minute of alternating movements mixed in with some body weight exercises, some weight training exercises. And I'm gonna show you how we can take prescribed weights and prescribed exercises like strict pull-ups and pistols or weighted pistols, and we can regress them for the individual who has not yet mastered those skills, but is still on the way to learning them. So check out these progressions and regressions for conditioning workout specifics right now. The beauty of designing mixed modal conditioning workouts is that we get to play with a lot of different movements and we get to put them into different combinations that keep training fun, allow you to work your aerobic energy systems as well as build strength and skills. This example of an every minute on the minute workout started with on the odd minutes doing five L pull-ups right into 50 double unders. On the even minutes, we were doing five burpees into eight alternating goblet pistol squats. Now, all of those movements, perhaps except the burpee, are high skill. So someone who doesn't have those skills down, whether it be the double under, the L pull up, or the pistol squat, wants to get a great stimulus from this workout without compromising form, putting themselves at risk, and feeling defeated. So how are they gonna do that? Well, here's how I regressed this particular EMOM for an individual that might not have the same skill level. Instead of doing L pull-ups, we're gonna put a band on the bar. We're gonna do band-assisted pull-ups. Same repetition number, and choose a band thickness that's gonna challenge you, but not bog you down and keep you moving too slowly. Moving on to the double under, well, this particular individual doesn't have double under skills yet, so they're gonna do the same repetitions in single unders. Moving on to the next minute, burpees or burpees. They're gonna do burpees as well. But instead of having to go right into pistol squats, we're gonna put a box there, we're gonna give them the dumbbell, and we're gonna have them do weighted box step downs. If you recall, that was one of the earlier regressions in the pistol squat progression that we laid out for you. So by making these small changes within this workout, the individual is gonna get a similar stimulus. They're gonna be working on a skill that's difficult for them, and it's gonna keep them safe, but progressing along the way to these master skills. If you really wanna make progress fast, then you have to pick the right movement in the progression at the right time with the right intent. FBB provides endless ideas on how to develop variety and progression on top of the foundations once you've built them. Getting to those foundations, upholding those standards for years to come is the goal of our athletes because they wanna look good and move well for the long haul. Use these concepts to know when to pull back so that you can really start to move forward. We want you to feel successful and productive every time you're in the gym. If you found these progression tips helpful, then be sure to sign up for my email list in the description link below, where we send out free training tips every single week. If you wanna get into 
training these progressions firsthand and you want to see how this unfolds over 6, 12, 18 week training cycles, then feel free to try joining Persist, my training program, and get your two first weeks free by clicking the link in the description below as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Oh, 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 oh,